And hello everybody. Welcome to Monday, the 15th of May, 2017. I'm Doc Eon, and you're looking at some of my GIs that I painted up from Reaper. Now, they turned out a bit darker than I was planning to, but I feel that's okay. I mean, looking at old photos, everything looks very faded and sort of washed out, but I'm thinking, yeah, that maybe that's an artifact of the fact that these are old photos and, and, and photographs of, of that era tend to fade over time. The film quality wasn't as good as today. So that's my excuse. Anyway, we, we have a collection of soldiers here with a variety of weapons. Uh, the first four here are all carrying rifles or carbines, presumably uh, M1s. Two of them have scopes. Uh, these two are slight, they are slightly different. They're not the same guy. They're in the same pose and they have the same weaponry, but they're different. You can see mostly on the back here, the one guy has strapping and one does not. And here you can possibly see the thing I mentioned last week about different scales. One is a lot larger than the other. But, I don't know, maybe, I mean, some people are larger than others, so maybe that's natural. And here's the guy stealthily advancing, creeping behavior. Uh, and then we have the um, two guys with Tommy guns, both of whom are in a semi-crouched, running or something position, waving, or, oops, he's a little unbalanced. In this case, pointing at something and shouting. This is because submachine guns are usually... Well, I, I, I'm not sure what the... What the, what the um, um, doctrine was in World War II, but today SMGs are mostly carried by NCOs, so maybe they're in command somehow. This guy has a bit of heavier weapon. This is a bar, this is a Browning automatic rifle, which was a kind of early assault rifle. The thing that confuses me is this guy. He's clearly carrying what's supposed to be a light machine gun of some sort. The handle on top make it, makes it seem like an M1919 A6, but the barrel's wrong for that. The barrel looks more like a like an M60, which is a much more modern weapon, which did not exist in, in World War II. So I'm not sure what they were going for exactly there. But this is my collection of heroic soldiers. And the other thing I got done this week is finishing these two ladies. Um, I, I had hoped to get more done, but oh well. Better than nothing. Now... Uh, this one saw a bit of back and forth. Um, I started out with a very, very dull uh, brick red on her. It looked a bit too subdued, realistic, but boring. So what you see here is actually the result of a kind of dull red-orange paint job, and then a r bright red glaze added to it. It was actually the blood letter glaze from GW. And then I, you know, had various different colors for the trims to make it just stand out a bit more. And now it, it to make it even more shiny and, and well, to, to make it look less dull, uh, I used a satin varnish on it. You might be able to tell from the reflections. Now, for the cowgirl, on the other hand, um, no, this pretty much worked out the way I planned it all along. The skirts of, of this coat were difficult. It's, it's always difficult to highlight kind of a, a big surface that is slightly curved but doesn't have any sharp edges. What do you do? Uh, it just... Eh. You kind of rely on the lights to do the work for you. Um, of course, both these have a slightly more 
tan skin tone than I normally paint on the women. This one because, well, the one on the left because she's Asian, and on the one on the right because she's an outdoors type, so she should be a bit more, have a bit more color to her, perhaps. But, you know, that was that. Here we have a bunch of minis that are fairly far along. Uh, these have all received, well, most of the areas are base coated and shaded. They, they all look a bit dark. That's because there's no highlighting. Well, these might not look that dark because they're very pale. The, the base coats are very pale colors on the zombies, the Nazi zombies. Um, but they haven't received highlights or detailing. But I would say that everything you see here is, is like 50% complete at least. And, and uh, you know, well within reach to finish by next week. Uh, I have a couple of others that are I'm working on that are, mm, you know, still primer, a lot of it. And a few colors like Napoleon here has just got the face painted, but nothing else really. Um, for example, on the basis. But, you know, slow progress is still progress. And, yeah, considering that I think I can finish most of this by next week, I still need to prep some more. Stuff. Next on the menu, I'm going for more army men, or in this case, rather, army women. These are the female militia from Blind Beggar Miniatures. This is a sort of sub-range of theirs that they've been adding to over the course of several different Kickstarters that have included a small squad of these. And so, in total, I've collected uh, 18 different minis, which are ladies with weapons and skirts. Yeah. So that's quite a big batch of stuff. But to that mix, I want to add this guy. This is a special edition miniature from Reaper called General Drake. And I have a theory about how I want to paint him up. I'm gonna have to look up some reference. And uh, well, you'll see what I mean when I get around to it. This is next in line for prep. This week's haul is not actually a Kickstarter for once. It's just an order of minis from uh, a site called North Star Miniatures. Uh, I don't recall exactly. I think there was some offer. They they um, uh, they had some theme, which I I latched onto and bought some cheap minis, it, and it, it was for sort of Victorian slash uh, early twentieth century slash steampunk minis. For example, here you can see a, a lady in a very fancy dress and some sort of steampunk gadget pistol. Um, here we have a more normal looking kind of officer with a saber and some gent in a top hat. Here we have a collection of kind of Victorian zombies. This is some crazy old coot in pet's clothing. Um, here's a guy in a dramatic pose running with his long coat flapping out behind him. Here we have some sort of pulp adventuring types. And these are some female pulp adventuring types. So, all in all, uh, a bunch of minis. And these actually fit kind of in the theme that I'm working on right now, the sort of Pitoloid early 20th century. Um, look, they're, some of them are perhaps a bit before, a bit early for my period, but what the heck. I'll, I'll put them in the queue at some point anyway. Anyway, that was this week's episode.
Join me again next Monday for another exciting tale of painting and uh, prepping. Until then, I'm Doc Eon, and I'm signing off.